Hello fellow compounders. In a previous video, we reviewed the Bogleheads 3 fund portfolio that used low-cost index funds. I didn't make much of a distinction between index mutual funds and index ETFs in that video. I used them interchangeably. However, a club member asked if using one or the other makes a difference. In this video, I'm going to explain the differences between index mutual funds and index ETFs. I'll review the advantages and disadvantages of each and I'll tell you which of them I prefer using and why. Also, at the end of the video, I'll mention my favorite index funds. This video is for educational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. I am not your financial advisor and you're responsible for your own financial decisions. In this video, I'm only gonna be talking specifically about passive index funds. There are active mutual funds and active ETFs out there, but they are outside of the scope of this video. Let's start with the basics. For the purposes of investing in a basket or portfolio of stocks, both mutual funds and ETFs or exchange traded funds will do the job. But let's understand their similarities and their key differences. Index mutual funds and exchange traded funds ETFs are similar because one, they are investment pools. Mutual funds and exchange traded funds or ETFs are both investment vehicles that allow investors to pool their money together and invest in a diversified portfolio of securities such as stocks, bonds, or other assets. Two, they use the same indexes. Fund companies will use an index, for example, the S&P 500, and replicate the holdings of the index in the fund. Both mutual funds and ETFs may use the same index. So in that case, they're similar or the same. Three, they both have fees that are very competitive. Recently, Fidelity produced several mutual funds that don't charge management fees, basically zero. The ETF's counterparts from Vanguard iShares or Schwab have fees in the 0.03% to 0.1%. That's three to 10 basis points. I know what you're thinking. If they're so similar, what's the big deal? Hold on. You should be aware of the differences that could impact you. Here are the five main differences. One, tax efficiency. This is important. You will likely pay less taxes with an ETF than a mutual fund. Index ETFs are generally more tax efficient than mutual funds. ETFs are structured in a way that minimizes capital gains because the way ETFs are created and redeemed, capital gains are typically not triggered until the investor sells the shares. On the other hand, mutual funds may generate capital gains when the fund manager sells securities within the fund. And these gains are passed to the investors of the fund. So basically in a mutual fund, whether as the mutual fund trades its portfolio, you have to pay capital gains taxes on those trades. While in the ETF, you don't pay capital gains until you sell the ETF share itself. So more tax efficient when it goes to ETFs. Number two, trading. Mutual funds are bought and sold through the fund company that creates, manages, and distributes them. In most cases, you can also buy the mutual fund through other brokers but you might have to pay a commission. The transaction happens at the end of each day at the net asset value at the close. In contrast, ETFs trades like stocks on a stock exchange and can be bought and sold using any stock broker throughout the trading day at market prices. So let me give you an example of mutual fund transactions. For example, you could buy Fidelity's S&P 500 mutual fund through Fidelity and pay no transaction fee. If on the other hand, you wanted to transact the Fidelity S&P 500 through Schwab, Schwab will charge you a transaction fee of $74.95. Ouch. Um, it's really a way to encourage you to buy a Schwab fund instead of Fidelity, which is the competitor. So mutual funds, basically, if you're doing mutual funds, go with the platform that produces the mutual fund. Let's take a look at the ETF side. You could buy an ETF, let's say Vanguard's S&P 500, symbol BOO, which is practically the same as the mutual fund that Fidelity was providing you of the S&P 500. And you can buy it at any broker. So if you bought VOO in your Schwab account, Fidelity account, or other broker with no commissions, you will pay practically zero, zero transaction costs. And you don't have to wait for the end of the day to know at what price you bought it. Three, automatic investing. Mutual funds are good for setting up automatic investing. They have been doing it for ages. However, setting up automatic investing with ETFs can be a bit challenging with some brokers. You can do it with brokers that allow fractional tradings, 
and not all of them do right now. I've been able to set up automatic investing with M1 Finance. As time passes, this will probably not be an issue because eventually all brokers will have the ability to trade fractional shares. Four, options. Options can be traded on ETFs while there are no options traded on mutual funds. So being able to trade options against ETFs is a good tool to have. You can write covered calls against the ETFs or you could buy insurance for your portfolio. It is always better to have options. Number five, investment minimums. Some mutual funds require a minimum investment. For example, Vanguard's Admiral shares have a $2,500 minimum investment. The Admiral shares have a lower expense ratio than the investor counterparts, and so you get a discount. The difference is around 10 basis points. On the other hand, on the ETF side, the minimum used to be the price of one share, but that isn't the case any longer. With more brokers allowing fractional share trading, basically you could invest $1 if you wanted to. So the question of which one is better, mutual funds or ETFs comes down to your personal needs and use case. I suggest using index mutual fund if one, you want to set up an automatic investment plan where you invest X amount of dollars every paycheck. It is much easier to set up using a mutual fund than an ETF. To do it with ETFs, you'll need a broker like M1 Finance, which can trade fractional shares. Two, you have no other choice because it's what your employer's retirement plans provides. And three, you want to avoid the temptation of trading your account. Mutual funds force you to wait until the end of the day to buy or sell, so you cannot trade them. I would highly suggest using an index ETF in all other cases. I really think an ETF is a better option than a mutual fund. It gives you more flexibility than a mutual fund and you can do exactly the same thing. The ETF is more tax efficient if you're investing in a taxable account and also you can trade options. Here are my favorite mutual funds and ETFs. They are provided by solid companies that have very low expense ratios. On the mutual fund side, I would go with Fidelity. I would use Fidelity S&P 500 fund, ticker FXIX. Its expense ratio is 0.015% or 1.5 basis points. It's really cheap. Also, Fidelity Zero Large Cap Index Fund, ticker symbol FNILX. Its expense ratio is, you guessed it, zero. And Fidelity Zero International Index Fund, ticker symbol FNILX. And again, its expense ratio is zero. Basically, these are the cheapest funds you will be able to find. Okay, on the Schwab platform, I would use Schwab S&P 500, ticker symbol SWPPX, and its expense ratio is two basis points, or 0.02%. Also, Schwab 1000 Index Fund, ticker SNXFX, with an expense ratio of 0.05%, or five basis points. And on the international side, Schwab's International Equity Fund, Thicker SWISX with an expense ratio of 0.06%. On the ETF side, I would use Vanguard. Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF, ticker symbol VOO, with an expense ratio of 0.03%, three basis points. And for the broad market, I would use Vanguard's Total Stock Market Index, ticker VTI, with an expense ratio of also three basis points. And on the international side, Vanguard's total international stock ETF is ticker symbol VXUS with an expense ratio of 0.07%. In the Schwab family of funds, I would use Schwab's broad market ETF, symbol SCHB, also with an expense ratio of three basis points. I also like Schwab's dividend equity ETF, ticker symbol SCHD, with an expense ratio of 0.06%. By the way, I did a video on SCHD in the past. Here's the link. And Schwab's International Equity ETF, ticker symbol SCHF, with an expense ratio of 0.06%. And finally, iShares. I would use iShares S&P 500, ticker symbol IVV, with an expense ratio of 0.03%. iShares Core Total Stock Market Index, ticker ITOT. This competes with Vanguard's VTI and Schwab's SCHE, also with an expense ratio of 0.03%. Uh, practically all are very competitive and they're around the same price. And also 
iShares Core MSC Total International ETF, ticker symbol IXUS, with an expense ratio of 0.07%.